Hi everyone, it's Ash and I'm back with another YouTube video for you. Today we're going to be talking about something that has been weighing so heavy on my noggin and I'm so excited to address this with you guys. So many of you know that I currently stream on Twitch three days a week. I stream every Wednesday, Friday, and Sunday. But there's been something that I've been noticing in this Twitch community and streaming community in general where these, I just wish people would realize these three mistakes that I've seen so many streamers make. And they're deeper than your stereotypical like, hey guys, don't watch your viewer count and um, make sure that you're having fun. It's a little bit deeper than that. And it's something that I think someone needs to talk about this. So we're just gonna jump right into it today. Number one, create goals and no begging. More often than not, I think so many streamers live in the moment that we don't take time to actually write down plans and goals to keep us sane. So for example, I feel like a lot of our goals are for Twitch written out by I'm going to be an affiliate or I'm going to be a partner. And those are kind of our stages of success. This isn't very healthy because we're not taking time to actually figure out where we are with streaming and make goals in between doing those two very, very different titles. Being an affiliate and being a partner have very, very different goals from three average viewers to 75. There's such a big jump and I feel like so many people don't realize how discouraging that can be when you finally hit affiliate to that partner push. That in between is a really big gap. And it's really good if you can have something written down for yourself to tell yourself, here's other things I want to accomplish in the meantime. I think we all need to consider the mental health of a streamer comes from the expectations we put on ourselves. And if our goal in life is to achieve something that is so far away and we don't have any other smaller goals to celebrate on that path, it's very easy to get discouraged, depressed, and it just, it makes you feel like crap. Like it's so hard to feel like what you're doing is making a difference at all. So I highly recommend taking the time, just write down five goals. Give yourself kind of like a two month goal, maybe a six month goal, a one year goal, and a five year goal. Give yourself something to look forward to achieving over time. So that way as you progress through each goal, you can celebrate yourself and everything you're trying to do. So the reason why I say no begging is because more often our goals revolve around numbers or monetary value. So getting subs, bits, uh, follows, or viewer count, a lot of us uh, kind of gauge our success by the amount of numbers we're seeing increase through each of those categories. And a trap that I see a lot of people fall into is they either put like four different types of monetary goals on their stream. So like here's a donation goal, a sub goal, a bit goal, and it's just a little overwhelming. It kind of feels like all they want is your money when you're watching them. Um, or you see people that are constantly asking for that push. Like guys, we're just 10 follows away or we are five subs away from hitting our goal. And people like to be a part of a goal, but there's also a balance in finding when you're asking someone to help you and that comes across as begging compared to people are there and they know how to hit a sub button and they can probably see your goal because it's printed across your screen. They know they can do that for you and you can get excited when you hit your goal and thanking everybody. But if you're just sitting there asking them for things, it, it doesn't feel like you're as grateful as you could be. So trying not to put that pressure on your viewers who are taking time out of their day to be there for you is so important. I think we could all kind of learn from being a little bit more humble when we have those goals. All right, so point number two has to do with networking. Now, this doesn't mean that networking's good or bad, but I want to challenge everybody to think about it a little bit deeper than I think most of us have. So. When we think of networking, we consider like, okay, maybe joining a, a group, a community that helps support each other. 
um, potentially two streamers with similar size viewer counts coming together and trying to do like a co-stream. And I think our initial reaction to both of those is to immediately jump on that wagon and say, yes, I, I need to increase my viewer count and this is gonna help me do it. We are going to become buddies and we are going to grow together and then we're gonna be partners together and then we're gonna keep co-streaming it's a little unrealistic, like just a little bit, <laughs> because I think we forget about the fact that you are at the end of the day, your name and your brand is who you are as an individual. And I want to challenge a lot of you out there that you need to keep your individuality. So if you are deciding to partner up with someone or join a community, at the end of the day, you need to be true to who you are as a person. If you have someone constantly on your stream talking and you're counting on them to carry your stream, or if you are hoping that this person's community will just keep things alive, you're not working hard enough as a streamer to entertain your audience and pull them in for who you are. As a bonus point, I also encourage you to look into the community or the person you're looking at co-streaming with. Um, what kind of person are they? What kind of viewers are they bringing in? Because what if your views clash? You want to make decisions that are also beneficial for your viewers and you're looking out for them and then you just bring in all these people that they don't get along with it's going to be a lot harder to run a more wholesome community if everyone doesn't agree and is clashing opinions so it's also something that you as a streamer have the responsibility of looking out for your stream and for the people that are inside of it and what is going to help bring you all together. I encourage you, I'm not saying don't do this. I've seen a lot of people make careers off of having other people on their stream and that's what they specialize towards. I'm talking about the exception, the rest of us, that um, we, we need to be ourselves. We need to be unique enough to reel people in. And to do that, I think you have to have some ability to stand on your own and present yourself to your audience without having the help of someone else there. So for my final point, point number three, I highly recommend this to everybody, but I think we all struggle mentally trying to overcome this. And it's not taking any risks. I am sure there are so many of you out there that have watched YouTube video after YouTube video and you are just feeling so beat up by possibly not succeeding and you're you're just watching all these people who are telling you here's what you do for success and here are your five mistakes, here, here are the things I recommend. And when you come back to your stream and you're trying to apply those, you just feel like it's just not working. Like, I just, I can't seem to figure this out. And it's very discouraging. And I want to encourage you that it's okay to get things wrong. Every, every big person out there, every big streamer, every big content creator has had to deal with failure. And the reason why they've dealt with it is because they are taking a risk to find their success. And that's the key word is their success. Their success is not your success. Same with everything I'm saying in this video. Everything I'm saying today is what I'd recommend for everyone and it can hopefully help you find your individuality and, and what works for you. But I think sometimes we really do forget about how we can find ourselves and how we need to sometimes do something that may not work in order to find who we are as a streamer or as a content creator. So this point is to just encourage you to try and do different things. Don't do them all at once, that's overwhelming, but try different streaming days or a different game. Maybe try being a more interactive streamer with your audience or maybe you're gonna find a more unique way of doing that. Whatever it is, you need to take that step of fear and just go with it and just overcome whatever you're worried about and give yourself that chance to possibly fail because even if you fail, you're going to succeed by learning from that failure. But for me personally and what I would encourage to most of my streamer friends and viewers, 
that are looking at streaming. These three things are just to help you and help guide you so you don't make mistakes that would hurt you. It's just something to consider to benefit you further that is a little bit deeper than most things you would think about as a streamer, behind the scenes that is. So thank you all so much for being here for my video today. I really appreciate it. I will see you guys for my next video. Signature sign off. Bye.